Hi guys, in this video we're going to use a VLOOKUP function that takes a col the index column argument as a vector. Or put another way, we're going to use a we're going to perform a an array VLOOKUP function. All right, so let's get at it. So here's our data that we're starting with. Now you can imagine this data as being uh, customer transactions. Here are the customers' names for lack of uh, creativity. And here are transactions these customers conducted. So customer A had these seven transactions, okay? Let's say on some other end, or for some reason, you need customer uh, F's transactions, okay? Traditionally, we look, we use the VLOOKUP, and you should be quite familiar with VLOOKUPs if you're watching this. If you're not, be sure to check my channel, Jaleer Academy, and watch my VLOOKUP videos. I have a few that are critically acclaimed to get you up to speed, because this is a, taking VLOOKUPs a little bit further. Okay, so just the traditional VLOOKUP. Let's say we look up uh, uh, customer F, and we look him up in this array. And at this point, is where the difference lies. When we get to the third argument, the column index number. Traditionally, we just put one number in here associated with the column that we're interested in. Actually, since we started here, this is column one, two, three, all the way up to column eight, I believe. Okay. Now, let's do that. Let's say we want the customer's seventh transaction. For, for So we're here. Okay, so that's column eight. Don't confuse that with the number eight. It just so happens to be number eight there. Comma false means I want an exact match. And lo and behold, we get eight for customer F. Okay, that's the traditional VLOCA. But what if we want the customer's entire transaction history, their last seven transactions? Well, if we set this up, however you set it up, if you want it in a row like this, you set it up, label it nicely, you don't have to. You can perform a VLOOKUP array function that'll do this. Now, how do you do this? With any array function, you have to highlight where you want the array function to go into and then start typing the function. So I highlight those blank cells. I start typing equals VLOOKUP. I still want to look up customer F. I still want to look up in the same table as the traditional VLOOKUP approach. I want to lock that table. Except when we get to the column index number, now I open up these squiggly brackets. And now I want multiple returns. Okay, So I want column 2, which is associated with transaction 1, 3, all the way on up to column 8. So separate those with columns. I mean commas. <laughs> Close the squiggly brackets. That's your column index number. Z now. Traditionally just one, right? Comma false for the same reasons as before because we want an exact match. Now, don't just hit enter. As with every array function that you've learned, you have to do shift, control, then enter and you'll see that we get all the transactions with this one function, okay? Instead of having to type that VLOOKUP function and alter it seven times, we get it all in one shot, okay? And I made this little graph here just to maybe like a dashboard effect where I get to see the customer's kind of history on their transactions, whether they're they got any kind of noticeable pattern with their last transactions or not. And I could change the customer name here and the VLOOKUP, of course, updates with the appropriate transactions. So we're on customer D. As you'll notice, that matches this row here. Okay, And then this chart also updates. So that's just a little bonus for um, frills over there. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. This is slightly more advanced. Um, you could think of a scenario where you might need this. Um, much more useful than 
or much more efficient, I should say, than typing in multiple VLOOKUP functions when you can actually use this array of column indexes combined with an array function to get the same in one shot. Okay, hope this was helpful. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment. Till next time, have a great day.